Good morning, everyone. So let's begin. Uh, my name is Alexey Grinevich, and uh, today's topic is RP 6.6 .6 that is already available, and you will see it in your customer area later today. So binary is being published at the moment and should soon appear there. So you will be able to repeat most of the things that we will talk about. My name is Alexey Grinevich, as I, as I said, and I am from Rapiz development team. I'm one of uh, Rapiz developers, and I'll be explaining new features of Rapiz. So uh, today, in this presentation, we have just one slide, because we are going to use uh, our documentation to drive this presentation. And I'm closing this presentation and moving to the Rapiz documentation. So default root site for Rapiz documentation, rapizdoc.inflatra.com. Just one more point. If you have any questions during uh, this talk uh, regarding Rupees, reg uh, regarding this version, regarding maybe anything else related to Rupees, feel free to type them into the questions uh, uh, section of the go to webinar and and in the end we will have q and a so if there are any questions i'll be happy to uh, to try to answer them so i'm going to uh, switch off the video because it it's a part of screen uh, and sometimes it's it lo uh, lowers the resolution and uh, reduces the translation quality and we'll proceed in screen sharing only mode so I'm disabling the video and let's go. So this is the root of the documentation, rapizdoc.inflector.com. New version is mentioned here. I'm going to release notes in the top menu. And uh, sometimes uh, we, we miss this menu. If we scroll down, it disappears. And yeah, it's sometimes a bit tricky to find it. So you need to scroll up if you don't see it. Release notes. And latest uh, topic here is release note for 6.6. .6. Uh, key features that appeared in 6.6 .6 are explained here in the summary section. And we just going to cover these key features now. But we are going to cover them in a bit different order. And we start from the line number two. This is uh, Azure DevOps integration uh, using Rupees uh, test adapter. We had Azure DevOps integration implemented earlier. And earlier, it uh, was uh, a bit simpler. And uh, it missed some features that were asked by customers. One of them is uh, execute uh, on the Azure hosted instances. So previous implementation required us to have uh, the Windows host to run Azure agent. Uh, so we needed to install rupees on that host, prepare everything, and then we were able to run the test there. Right now, we uh, improved something, uh, and uh, we now provide an example on how execute rupees tests in Azure DevOps using uh, using the pipeline on the Microsoft hosted uh, agent. So the, this means that uh, this project contains some tests. So it has a repository attached to it. In it, there are some tests, and the pipeline is specified in a way that if I go there, oh, not, I not, need to go to pipeline, edit it. What it does step by step is that it first installs rupees. This step installs rupees on the new instance. Uh, and the instance itself is Windows uh, 2019. So new instance is created at Microsoft site. Then uh, Rubies is installed there. Screen resolution is set. Then 
uh, test adapter is uh, in also installed and this is something new and it enables some features and then the tests are executed using this test adapter. Uh, we may specify which tests, SS test files to execute this way and which of them to exclude. Uh, and everything I'm telling, uh, showing you is also explained in detail in this section uh, about Azure DevOps integration. You may find it from the main, main menu from the manuals, so manuals, Azure DevOps, and also from release notes, Azure DevOps integration. Release notes or P66 uh, Azure DevOps integration. So it's able to install RPs on the new clean host and run the tests, uh, as well as uh, check uh, the sources out from some Git repository. So in this case, the Git repository is also stored there in, at uh, Azure, but in general, it may be any, uh, any external repository such as GitHub or Bitbucket or your own uh, Git repository. So it may check it out and then execute this pipeline. And uh, finally, what it does in this pipeline, it, uh, let me go to its definition again. It uploads the results of execution. First of all, it uploads logs and then test results. So if I go to execution history, I'm not planning to start execution right now. Uh, I can do this, uh, but it would take some, another five to 10 minutes. So I have a number of executions, two of them are failed and the last of them is passed. And I may go to the execution, switch to tests. So for those of you who are not aware about Azure DevOps, uh, it's like requires some uh, learning curve to be passed to, to be clear. So if you don't plan uh, to use it, it may be unclear what's going on because really too many screens and interfaces. So this is a thing that requires some learning. It's not just trivial and evident by itself. So I'm at test steps. At test step, I see nothing because by default it filters by aborted or uh, failed tests. So I'm clearly clearing this filter and I may see all the tests executed in this in this pipeline execution. I may go to any of them, see attachments, and I can see that among the attachments, there is a video. I may, for example, download it and see, and it will show me detailed test execution of what was going on on the host that was running the test. But this one is passed, it's not really interesting. Uh, also, I am I have here the uh, execution log file that I may see and test report. I may also download it and open in rupees, it's a TRP file. It would contain a test report and uh, screenshots. Okay, uh, it's more interesting to see this in real life with failed tests because when everything is passed, it's not so interesting because nothing to actually worry about. But this one is failed and I want to figure out what was going on. This is what I was actually doing like a couple of hours ago when I set up this pipeline. So this one has failed. I may again go to attachments. So the trick with remote hosts, like, like, like in this situation, is that this host is created just before the pipeline execution and then it is disposed. So I cannot go there and look. It doesn't exist after the test run. So this information, these files are everything that, that, that is left after the execution. So that's why we try to publish maximum uh, available information to be able to figure out uh, the, the problems and troubles encountered during the execution. So here I have a video and I'm trying to figure out what was wrong from this video section. If I scroll to somewhere closer to end, I see that the problem was with login and it used the login that was incapable to authenticate with the organization that, that has been tested. So that was the issue and I corrected that and then, oops, then pipeline started working. It seems that I occasionally closed an RDP host. I will reconnect shortly.
Okay, you should be able to see my screen again. Okay, just waiting for RDP to log in. Okay, I'm back. Well, so that's all about uh, Azure pipelines. You may find detailed information. Uh, you may find the script that is doing uh, Rupees installation uh, right here uh, and uh, explanation for each uh, this step each pipeline step required to have similar configuration working uh, on your environment. So I hope you will find this useful. Just one note on how to enable video. The video is controlled by the uh, run settings file. So if I go to the, to the repository, source with source files, okay, it's terribly slow. And it's unusual. Uh, inside the test, uh, there is a file video.run settings. It contains uh, the instructions on enabling video, and it's also mentioned in the documentation. And the step on how to enable these run settings is also described here. So you may find everything. Okay, next step returning back to release notes. And next step is uh, local framework, local global objects for frameworks. It's this last line. And to do this, we will take one of the framework that we have available uh, on the GitHub. I'm going to inflect your GitHub. And the framework that I'm going to use right now is one for Dynamics 365 CRM. Uh, I'm copying its uh, URL and I'm going to use the Git client to clone it here on the desktop. I'm using Git clone. Uh, this Git client is a Tartuas Git, but it doesn't matter which one uh, you use, so they are all similar in functionality. So this is just my preference, but you may use another one. Uh, so I did check out and it is here, here it is. So this is uh, my local copy of this framework and I'm going to open it. I'm opening this framework in rupees. So here in the object tree, I have a number of standard objects like database, file, global. And in addition to that, there is an object called CRM. This object is actually defined in the framework. Now the framework root file contains a lib folder. And here inside the lib folder, there is implementation of this object. And when developing your frameworks, you may define similar object uh, and use it everywhere in all nested subtests, and you may add as more functions as needed to it. Also, you may have more than one such object. As for this one, I may, for example, add one more operation to it. Uh, so let me go there. So this is how the object is defined. This is also described in the documentation. So the topic explains how the such object is used and how to add operation and help and uh, some additional things to, to such objects. And I'm just going to go to this object and add one, op one more operation to it. I want to add uh, some fake functions like check ID. I don't know what it will be doing.
just for demonstration. So that's it. So the name in CRM dash means that the operation will belong to the CRM object. The CRM object is declared here in this file using says global object uh, command. And once I have it defined, I may rebuild the met metadata that is displayed here. I need to click inside this file and press Shift, Control, and F5. Uh, the command line window appears for the fraction of seconds. And you may see that check ID action shows up. So this is how I may enrich this global object. Now, wherever am I inside this test framework in any subtest? So I'm double clicking to open it. Uh, I still see this global object and I may use it in RL. It's actually used everywhere in this framework. So it's a useful way to share in common functionality uh, and to group it across global objects. Now, proceeding to next topic, which is uh, Git integration in rupees. Uh, going back, scrolling up, to show this top menu, release notes. And the first line here is the ability to store tests in Git. And this leads to the Git topic. Uh, you may find the same topic from the main menu. It's a bit tricky to find because we have many things here. If you go to user's guide, then features, and then Git integration, you will get to the same topic. Uh, I've just made a clone of the repository. So it's a local version of the repository. Git itself, Git itself is uh, a really advanced system. It has many features for distributed uh, development, although it's not trivial. So some operations with Git are really uh, requires do really require understanding. So at least someone with good understanding should initially set up the Git repository uh, to, to be able to work with it within team. So if your purpose is to work with uh, a number of smaller tests or with uh, in, in very small team where with one or more men, it is easier to work with standard feature that we provide it's saving the tests in Spira, save to Spira. But uh, if you work with larger framework or you plan to use continuous integration or you want to store your tests within the source repository, then uh, it may be essential that you have the Git in your project. So in my case, these tests are already in Git. Now let's look what happens when I try to save them to Spira. I'm doing save to Spira. So default behavior uh, when there is no Git is it would save this particular test case to Spira with all of its files. And when we deal with framework, we require to save uh, the framework root first before saving uh, the particular file. Right now, we may save any file in any order because we plan to use Git and it will show up in the following manner. So I'm choosing the test case in Spira to save this one. It's create new lead. Uh, I'm, this framework works with Dynamics 365 2020 Wave 2 that is released quite recently. And I'm creating a case in Spira and saying, it's titled create new lead. Choosing it and pressing save synchronize. So it checks that the folder is within existing Git repository. That why, that's why it suggests to keep the, the source files in Git. And this is what I'm, I'm, play, I'm planning to do. So I'm saying, yes, I want to use Git with this project. And save happens really quickly in this case. And if I go now to Spira,
and go to test cases. The test cases, there is the only one in this project yet, and it's create new lead. So the way how it references the file is uh, git root in this percent marks and then pass to the SS test, to the root SS test. So this is how git stored files are uh, mentioned from uh, automated tests. And nothing is actually stored in the document repository in contrast to what happens uh, when we save everything to Spira. So there in the documents, there is only one link file, this one and nothing else. So all sources are actually handled by Git. This means that if I modified something, I just changed something, uh, what I need to do, I need to go to this folder and use my Git client to commit, for example, something, to uh, upload my changes to the source repository. This is one scenario. Although, uh, for convenience, we enable a couple more features that to make real integration with Git even easier uh, for teams. I'm canceling this uh, commit and I'm going to use a feature described here in the documentation. So I want Git commit to happen every time I'm pressing save to Spira. And it's possible to configure it that way I'm going to git integration and one of the topic is synctospira.cmd. And there are a couple of samples synctospira cmd files and I'm going to use so one is using command line git client so it shows no user interface it silently commits every time I press synctospira and since I already use start to us, and I believe it's possible to do with many other uh, desktop Git clients, I'm uh, going. I'm planning to use interactive, uh, interactive version of the same file. So I'm copying the con the contents of this file, and I'm going to add the sync to Spira CMD. This CMD file may be stored in a, in in a couple of places. If I want to use it across all my tests and test frameworks if I have more than one uh, then I may place it in the common place which is uh, C users public uh, public documents rupees and store it here into Spire CMD so it will be automatically launched by rupees uh, alternative location for it is the framework root. I'm going to the framework root. I'm going. I'm choosing test open root, and this is one more new feature in Rupees 6.6 to ease navigation between tests and subtests within the framework. And here I'm choosing create text file, and I'm going to name it synctospira.cmd copy and I'm putting the contents from this cmd file into synctospira so actually it may be saved into the same repository and configure the saving logic for all users of this uh, test framework within this repository so it's here and now uh, if I press uh, sync to Spira, it would first ask me if I want to save framework root and link to some test case. I'm going to do this uh, new test case frame. Okay, I'm, I want to store it in Git. And now, after I, I linked it to Git, I see this uh, window from Tortoise saying me that these files were modified, 
please leave the, some message to commit them to the Git repository. So, so it's actually doing source control operation and saving of the next version of modified files. So I may say that uh, what I did, uh, link it test cases to Spar commit. Uh, uh, and in Git, you have commit, push, and uh, pull operations. So next, it tries to do pull to synchronize with changes already uh, made by others. I simply ignore it. And, and then it tries to push to upload all changes to the global repository. Again, it's all uh, specified here in this CMD file and it may be accommodated to meet your needs on how you prefer to uh, to do this in with, with, with your users and your repository. Okay, now I plan to uh, modify this test set to this framework to work with my new instance of Dynamics 365. By default, it has some configuration file that is uh, that requires some information. I have it here. These are URLs, login name, and password for some users. Also, I'm going to save like a couple more uh, test cases to Spira. So create price list and other test case test case. Uh, again, one more new feature is uh, are these two buttons. They were not available in Save to Spyro dialog before, but now they are here just for convenience and I'm uh, using them. Uh, create price list, creating the test case in Spyro and linking the test to it. Again, it asks me to save it, uh, also save it to Git, can commit all changes to Git. I'm simply canceling it because uh, I want to make some more changes before doing that. Now returning back to the framework, doing test open root. One more change that happened with Rupees 6.6 .6 is uh, the way how it opens the subtest. I'm double clicking on this opportunity workflow and it opens in the same window. So by the, by the, it, it doesn't open new windows anymore. Uh, if you still want to open it in new window, there is a context menu item for that. Okay, this is uh, another test case. I'm going to save it to Spira and uh, create new case. So what, what I'm doing now, I have test cases and test management performed by Spira. So it will hold test sets while tests uh, and files are now controlled by Git and they're stored there. Uh, again, I'm, okay, I may save everything. So it would save two SS test files that are now linked to Spira and config that, that has been modified. So I'm saving. Uh, every, everything is linked to Spyro now. Commit. Uh, commit means locally. Uh, remember local changes. Then pull. Pull means synchronize with remote changes that possibly happened with, in the remote repository. And then push to upload everything to remote repository. I, I don't plan to publish everything to remote repository. Yes, I, I'm fine with my local repository. And for those who are aware about uh, Git, uh, it, uh, you probably are familiar with this concept. If you are not yet, probably uh, uh, you may postpone because this this is really advanced topic. So Git is not, it's not a trivial source control system. Well, everything is saved to Spyro, everything is configured. Now, I want to execute it using Rupees Launcher. And part of uh, new uh, Git support is that Rupees Launcher is 
aware about Git and it may execute such type, type of uh, test frameworks. And there are a couple of ways for doing that. I'm going to uh, Spira and I'm going to create a test set. Before I do this, uh, if I plan to have many Git repositories, uh, then I may have them uh, checked out separately. And in this case, I will need to define a number of custom properties. It's, th that it's done here from the uh, configuration, edit custom properties, choose the type of artifact test set. And you may see there are a number of custom properties for test set, git URL, git user, git password, git branch. So these settings will be shown for each test set in this project. And if I want to repeat launcher to check out the files from specific URL by specific user with specific credentials, uh, then I may uh, fill them. I'm going to create a test set, but I will uh, use another approach uh, of doing the checkout. It's an alternative way. I'm creating a test set. Let me call it Dynamics Quick. It would be some short, uh, so short uh, test set. Saving it, editing. So here I have these fields, I may fill them, but I plan to leave them empty because I want to use the uh, Git repository checked out uh, by other means. For example, if you execute something using Azure, you may already have everything, everything checked out using Azure. So uh, you don't want uh, Rupees Launcher to do this again. So th that would be useful. And in this case, instead of specifying these settings, I will need to set up the system variable. And I, I'm going to do this a bit later. For now, I'm going to finish uh, creation of my test set. I'm adding a test case. Mm, it is, I think, create new lead. It's shortest one. I could add all of them, but uh, at least price list is quite long and it would eat uh, all the time for this webinar. Uh, so I added one test case to my test set. I'm specifying the automation host. I'm setting it overdue by applying yesterday as a plan date. It's not started. I'm saving it. Now, Rupees Launcher is not yet started. And before I start it, I want to set the environment variable. Going to settings. System environment, environment variables, environment variables. And as it is stated here in the doc, uh, there is a git root variable that may be specified. It is actually the same variable that is mentioned in the test case. So you may see this path to the test automation script. So I need to, specif to, to let it know how to resolve this part to find actual uh, path of the SS test. In my case, I'm going to define this variable, call it it root, and its path is, okay, it, it probably won't let me move this window. Oops, okay, I will move it first. Properties. The path is users and flag for desktop. Uh, git root. The name of variable is git root. The path is desktop slash uh, folder name. Okay. So this is full path to the root directory of the git repository containing my, my test framework. Okay. Okay, so once uh, once I specified it, if I had Rupees Launcher running, I would need to close it and launch again to read this environment variable. Since I don't have it, I just I'm just going to execute it. Oh, 
okay, it started and it sees that there is ready test, the, the test ready for execution. So the, the test starts. So it actually uh, running the test from this Git repository. So nothing has been downloaded from Spira because there is nothing stored in Spira. It works with the test uh, checked out from the Git repository and executing it. And once execution is done, we will proceed to the last uh, topic for today. It actually failed. That sometimes happen. So the test is going to. I, I helped to execute it manually. Uh, so this kind of issue sometimes happens. It's an intermediate one. Usually it happens on the slow host. So it doesn't happen on my like main host with uh, faster windows. But with this one, this happens. Anyway, going back to uh, Spira to test sets, I may see my test set is uh, reported as green, although it's just because I helped it to execute. Uh, anyway, I may go to test runs and see create new lead. Uh, and it would show me the execution report as before. And in addition to that, right now in the attachment section, we may find besides the screenshots, three more files. It's error.log, summary log containing the output log from the execution summary output log and TRP file. So I may simply click on TRP and view the full featured RPS report related to this particular test run. It opens automatically by RPS because it's linked to this TRP extension. Well, this is the report from last execution. And last, the feature that we are going to cover today, scrolling up to see top menu, release notes, piece 6.6, .6, and it is export reports as HTML. So I have this report opened here in rupees, and now I have an option to export it to HTML. That's a new feature. And now it asks me what TRP to use, I'm using this one. What type of report to produce? Actually, it now has a templating engine and it may have more uh, possible report representations in addition to these three. And one may use custom templates to build own report upon requirements. And as destination uh, path, I'm going to use the desktop uh, desktop and let it call let me call it full report yeah replace it so it would be the type is full execution report in in this type it uh, embeds images into html so everything is in one file packed in one file it's useful if you want to send it somewhere or attached somewhere else, and the report looks like that. And there is a templating engine, so this look may also be modified and extended to fear to meet your needs. Another type of report, it's not really useful for this kind of execution, but sometimes when you have many test tests executed with, with one run, it's useful to use high-level report. This high-level report contains only test passed, test failed, and if you have more than one test, it would have this test passed, this test failed, and so on. So this is sort of summary report. 
Okay, so uh, I briefly stepped through all major changes inside Rupees 6.6. In, in addition to that, there are a lot of minor uh, changes and improvements. I uh, mentioned some of them, uh, but there are much more uh, also available, and uh, you may find them there. Uh, for example, one of them was to mention is that you may also now record video of execution with Rupees Launcher. You may find information about it right here in the release notes. Uh, record video playback in Rupees Launcher and learn how to do this. So this is now possible. Overall, uh, that's it. So that's what I planned to uh, demonstrate. I hope those of you who have waited for some of this feature uh, would be a bit happier uh with their appearance for those who didn't expect them uh you are now aware of their existence and may find them useful in the future as for now uh, i'm done with my talk thank you very much have a great have a great day and bye bye